Greetings, I'm Barent, and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to continue our playthrough of Ancient Chronicles Sword and Sorcery. This has been a blast. Colin and I are going to continue from right where we were when we stopped in the last video, and that was being able to read Story Moment or Event 1, and that's what we're going to do. But before we do, I want to mention that this video is shot back-to-back -back with the last one. We kind of did it over a whole big sitting, so just to know that if any errors were made in the first videos, we're not going to be correcting them, We're just going to, but you will see them in the pinned comments of these videos, so please check out those to find out any errors we may have made made and we'll be able to correct them going forward in the future. We're able to go through our first things in the under rain which is really cool and we made it through a little bit of this second quest. We're going to continue into the next part. I do also want to mention that this series is going to be seen not only here at Meet Me at the Table but also on the One Stop Co-op Shop. Now let's go ahead and read Story Moment 1 and continue Quest 2 and if you're excited to see if we can make it through then I need you to meet me at the table. The gallery leads to a vast stone vault, which dances with reflections from the flowing water. An underground stream flows over a series of waist-high waterfalls leading towards a placid pond at the cavern's heart. With a rhythmic glowing noise, first a scale-covered head and then a whole body of a tyrant lizard emerges from the pond. This gigantic reptile has razor-sharp talons and muscles so powerful it can climb the rocky walls. The beast's devilish eyes rest upon the party for a few moments and then, with a fluid motion and terrifying screech, the lizard disappears into the shadows of one of the many galleries that open from this cavernous hall. So at this point, we're going to take the two blue tyrant lizard enemy cards and shuffle them into our enemy deck. In addition, we're going to be opening up a whole bunch more of this map. It says place and connect the following map tiles to tile 9B as shown. We're going to grab 2A, 12A, 14A, and 15B. Then we're going to place the following elements as shown. We're going to put a star spawn gate. Remember, I placed that spawn gate somewhere else. We're going to switch that with a different one and place it where it's supposed to go. Also, we're going to be putting out waypoint X, shrine open, barrier hindrance, one nest minion, and one search area. On top of that, we're going to take Story Event Card 2, Event 7, and Event 11 cards, shuffle them together secretly, face down, and randomly place one in each of the locations A, B, and C. Then we're going to spawn one enemy at the star spawn gate. If there's four heroes, which they're not, we'd spawn another enemy. Then we're going to place the Story Event 1 card revealed side on top of the event deck, kind of giving us a little bit more time. First, we're going to take our card and mix up in the two blue Tyrant Lizard cards here. We're going to go ahead and give them a good old Truffle Shuffle and throw them back over there after I throw them all over the floor there. All right, Truffle Shuffled up. Perfect. Next, we're going to place our Spawn Gate right here in this tile. And I'm going to try not to cover these because I did that the first time and we for <laughs> failed to realize that one of these was an actual space. We're going to put our Shrine right up there. Next, we're going to put our Hindering Token right here. This is that waist deep water where the <laughs> those vile creatures emerge from. Next, we're going to take our three Story Event Cards. We have Story Event Card 2, 7, and 11. We're going to give these a good old Truffle Shuffle here and place them down on the board. We're going to put one right here. One right here and one up here. Oh, hopefully the one we're looking for is the first one we find. Lastly, we're going to take our nest and place it right down there. Oh, we know how fast we got to get there and destroy that thing. Otherwise, those venoms come out. Venoms are no good. Next, we're going to spawn an enemy on this spawn gate. So let's see what enemy has come out. It is our tyrant lizard, a blue lizard. He's going to give us he's going to give us a soul thing. That's fantastic. Five health, one armor. It is one presence, and it has negative one attack for slash. It's going to gain a power, which is going to be pretty terrible. I'll place him right here. Let's see what enemy power he has. He has Berserker. If wounded, all attacks performed by this enemy inflict critical. And if he rolls a the gremlin simile, he's lethal three. Oh, that's terrible. All right, we got to take this guy out in one. Oh, I know if he's wounded, we got to take him out in one shot. All right, that's our lizard. We're going to take him. He's right here. We painted him all up. He's the blue ones. I painted them all blue. I got some green ones that I painted up green. We're going to put them right here in the spawn gate. Oh, man. And that's, 
That's where he goes. The last thing we have to do is place our card on top of the event deck. And I think that's it. We're ready to begin. Or I should say continue. Oh wait, there's two more things I forgot to do. One of the things I forgot to do is put down Waypoint X, which is right here. And then I also forgot there should be one of these over up on top next to that event card. So we're gonna shuffle these up a little bit and we're just gonna place this one right there. There, now we're all set, let's go. The first thing we have to do at the beginning of our enemy activation is we have to roll our red die. And we got one, so one of our little Venom creatures is gonna appear out of that nest. Oh, super pumped for him. Before we move into the next phase, I didn't look at the board exactly right. We had to shift it down a little bit according to our picture because I apparently can't tell to, like pictures versus where things are. So, but everything's great. I did have to place one of our shadow tokens down as well, which does change it. And the reason we noticed that this board was wrong, the, we were actually at a line of sight right to it right off the bat and we're like, but that doesn't look right. So then now we realized, yes, it was all supposed to be shifted down one. We got the board where it's supposed to be. We have our evil blue dinosaur creature here. He's gonna activate according to his encounter cards. So let's go ahead and draw that next since I'm done with my turn. We have encounter. Activate all enemies in full health. Otherwise, all enemies and minions use their power. Well, nope, that's not gonna happen because he is at full health. Oh, we're gonna activate him. Awesome. Here's our tyrant lizard scroll. And it shows right up here, he's gonna target based on highest health, but where he sits right now, he doesn't have line of sight and you'll see that in a second. He, these are his different steps he's gonna follow, and really none of them are gonna pertain except for the plus one right here, because again, he doesn't have line of sight. So he's gonna move up to two areas toward the closest hero. Then, if engaged, attack with claws. Otherwise, move one area toward the closest hero. So that's really all it's gonna do. Our Tyrant Lizard, if you notice, the X here and the X and R square are not gonna be able to see each other because this whole area blocks, which is why we're just doing the plus movement on his card. So he's gonna move one, two right here. Now this right here is an obstacle, meaning that we can't move down it, or up it, sorry, but we can come down it. It's basically a waterfall in the middle of the picture. At this point, he is not engaged with anybody, so he is gonna move one more space over here. So jokes on him, I have lured him right into our trap. Now that we're at the end of the enemy turn, we're gonna to have to move this guy three spaces towards the closest hero. One, two, three, not quite there. Oh, good, no chest hugging yet. Jean sees Sigrid needing a little bit of help. So what she's going to do is move three. One, two, three. Yes, she could check this out if she wanted, but she'd have to spend a precious action. And instead, she wants to use her one action to focus for this attack. Right now, because Sigrid is considered two characters when determining domination, we have three total characters compared to the one lizard. That means we are dominating because we're over, well, we're double the amount of enemies in that location. And so that means we get one auto success for that. We're going to focus, so that's going to give us our second auto success. We have our three auto successes here, including the one from our mace. Let's give our one red and three blue dice a roll looking for three hits. Oh, that is terrible. That is only one hit, but we do have a lightning bolt here. We can re-roll any of our hit dice. Yeah, we're definitely going to do that. We're going to re-roll all of these. I need two more hits, and if I get two more hits, we can one-shot this blasted tyrant lizard. Let's see, we got one, two more hits. Boom! Well, that was pretty awesome. This lizard tries to be a bother, but no, it's not. Good old Gene takes care of that, no problem. And we're gonna move up our soul shards to three. That will end our turn. I wish I could use some healing, but I can't. So next, let's roll for that nest. I'm gonna roll this red die, and we're going to spawn one venom. And you can see here, I just missed it in camera. There it is. We're gonna spawn one more venom. Great. We have our spawned venom, and I think Baron cheated a little bit, you guys. This one is gonna jump into this space and attach itself to Gene. This one here can move, I'm pretty sure, directly to this space, so that's one. Then it's gonna move here for two and move into this space for three, attaching itself to Sigrid. Now it is Maya's turn. She's going to move one, two. It's the question of do we want to do the action there? You know what, actually I think she can because she's not going to attack anything and she gets two actions. So she is going to do the action here, rolling the dice to see if she gets a success. The white resinous shroud gives way under the hero's touch, revealing a blue die. Let's roll a blue die and see what we get. <laughs> Reveals a blue die. We will get a hit or a star. I don't know which one we have. Industrious yet lethal venoms. Not more venoms! These vicious spider-like creatures vigorously defend their nest. Of course they do. Spawn one venom minion in the active hero's area. So that's going to be right where Maya is. 
Uh, yeah, that's just wonderful. And then we're gonna remove waypoint one from the quest. That venom will spawn right here. Now, Maya, she did an action that does not interrupt movement. She can continue to move. So she is going to continue to move, moving her third movement into the same space as her two friends. She's then going to use her one combat action to destroy the venom that is on Jean, because Jean is the one that has the most damage. Then what she's going to do for a free action is she is going to use her um, shard that she has, and she can heal one HP. She's gonna pick herself for that, so she's gonna be fully healed. And you're gonna see why we're doing that in a little bit, because she is poisoned. She does still have one more action left. So for her second action, she's going to use her summon sparks, or sparkles. Activate all illusions in play, we don't have one. If there are no illusions, uh, before activating, summon one illusion of rank act in your area. We'll place that illusion right here. Now, just to look at the illusion card, it's been a bit since we have. This says, uh, for each illusion in Maya's area, you must roll a blue die. If you roll a shield, kill the illusion and ignore the attack. It's pretty cool. It also has displacement. For each illusion in the target enemy's area, all Maya's attacks against the targeted enemy uh, inflict plus one damage. And finally, they cannot be directly targeted by enemies. However, they can get hit by a AOE effects. Also, since this is a companion, it is not able to trigger shadow tokens or go to waypoint tokens or trigger event cards. So I can't bring that over there and re reveal one of those event cards that Baron put down. So what I'm gonna do with my illusion, since I can now activate it, is move it one, two, three. I wanna put it into the same area as that nest because we want to kill that nest as soon as possible. So that will give her a plus one attack when she attacks that nest. Now, we will move to the enemy phase the first thing that's going to happen is we have to roll that red die to spawn more venoms. And we get two more. Beautiful. I love those red dice. So we're going to spawn two of them. Then at the en end of the enemy phase, this venom over here is going to attach itself to Maya. So Maya, oh, actually, that's not true. Jean is in the same space, and Jean has more damage. So it's going to be uh, placed onto Jean. Then these two are both going to move into this same area. One, actually, I think... One of the Venom will go to Maya, because Maya does not have a Venom, and then Jean will get a second one, because she just really loves these Venoms. I love those chest huggers, don't you? We'll now move to the event phase, and all we have to do is discard story event one, and then unfortunately resolve all of our Venoms. For Sigrid, all she's going to do is gain a poison one and discard the Venom that's on her. For Maya, Maya's simply just going to take a single point of damage. She healed that one point of damage last time, so she'll just gain the one again because she's already poisoned. Now, for Jean, Jean is going to gain a poison one and discard one of these venoms, but then when she has to discard the second venom, she can't take another poison one, so instead she's going to take another point of damage, putting her at a total of five damage out of seven health. Ow. Then, during the time phase, guess what? she's gonna take another point of damage. So moving to that time phase, she is back down to six damage out of seven health. That's going to also put Maya up to two damage, and that'll put Sigrid just to one damage. We'll also be able to refresh our powers, so thank goodness Jean will be able to refresh this, and then we all get an opportunity to save to try and get rid of that poison. Maya will try and save first looking for a shield, and she of course rolls a star. I need a lightning bolt for Sigrid. Come on, Sigrid. Nope, I got your shield. Oh, great. And then Jean <laughs> just needs a star. Let's see if we can do them all wrong. Yes, we do. All wrong. No one gets rid of their poison. Maya does not like that nest at all. And neither does Jean or Sigrid. So she's going to go first. Maya's going to take one step to move here. Now, she still does not have line of sight to this shadow token because of this black thing. So thank you, black thing, for saving us. She is within range, too. What she's going to do is spend her first action to focus. Her second action, she is going to attack that nest. But remember, since we're attacking that nest, we get plus one because we have our illusion there. So plus one hit. Before I forget, I did move Maya, but I want her to do as a free action, use this shard to have a hero heal one HP. And she's definitely gonna do that for Jean. So Jean is gonna heal one. She now only has five damage out of seven health. Woohoo! Let's roll up our dice using our level one here. So I get one blue and one red. Come on, hits. No, I get only one. So I have one, two, three total hits. There's one armor on that nest, so that will only deal two damage. All right, let's try this a second time. I'm gonna use my combat action then to use this new one that I have, Illusionary Attack. So I can attack a target enemy in the same area as the illusion, ignoring distance and line of sight. 
I'm doing one automatic damage with that. Then I also have the illusion there, so that's two. I get to roll one red die and two blue dice. Now, if I get a lightning bolt, I can negate the armor on this thing. Okay, come on, I need some hits. I need some hits. No, that's terrible. I rolled, I slowed it, that's wonderful. I dealt one, two, three, four damage. That means minus the one armor, we dealt three damage to the thing, putting it down to five damage. So it has one health remaining. I will have to flip this now for a two time cooldown. Of course, now this means we get to spawn another Venom. No Venoms, Colin. No Venoms, no Venoms. Let's roll it up. No, no, definitely one Venom. <laughs> and go ahead and just put it right on Maya because you know, that's Oy! what it loves to do. Maya wants it. The next character to activate is going to be Sigrid. Let's see what she can do. Well, what she's going to do is spawn about everything on the board. She's going to move one, two, because we really want to take out this nest. So I'm going to move two spaces to end in this area here. And this X to this X, we now have view. So we're going to go ahead and check out this. But we also have to read what X is. Among the ripples in the water, which now strangely begin to assume a threatening sinusoidal shape. Something shines through, perhaps some forgotten treasure laying in a muddy crack deep in the pond. To discover what rests in the depths, someone must dive deep and hold their breath for a long time. Hmm, sounds like a job for Sigrid. Now it says the first thing we have to do is take a, the green serpent enemy card and shuffle it into the enemy deck. All right, but note, when the green serpent dies, we are gonna remove that from the quest. So we're only gonna see it once through this adventure, which is probably gonna be pretty good for us. Now on the bottom here, it says, if you are not engaged, and you want to dive into the water, forfeit any remaining movement and spend your action activity and go to 2.8. Oh, that's so tempting. And that's totally what we're gonna do, mainly because I'm hoping that we can take out the nest with just my attack. I don't need to have this focus is what we probably would use it for. So let's go to 2.8 and see if we can maybe get another nest on the board. We're gonna take the remaining cards we have from enemy deck and shuffle in that green spider, or not spider, there's a green spider in here. But we're also gonna shuffle in a serpent there. All right, we gave it a good old truffle shuffle. We're going to stick it on back over there. The hero decides to release the treasure from its muddy prison in the depths. She breathes in and then dives deep to probe the muddy crack with his hand. We get to roll three blue dice, and since I'm a strength hero, I get to roll one more blue dice. That's pretty awesome. Our four blue dice are going to turn up awesome. We got a star, a lightning bolt, and a shield. So I think we got everything we needed. And with no small effort, she grasps the treasure and kicks to the surface. The active hero gains one treasure. That's going to be awesome. Let's go ahead and check out what we got. We've got a, we got a fistful of crowns. Of course we did. That's in the water. We're going to roll up some dice and gain some bucks. We're also then going to remove Waypoint X from the quest. We want some big bucks. We got 10, 20, 20 bucks was all that was in the water. You know, you could have done a little better than that, Baron. <laughs> well, at least we didn't get the gremlin. After reading the waypoint, we have to also spawn our darkness thing here. Let's see what we get. We found a dude with a power. Oh, no, he's got a power. That's going to be awful. Let's see what enemy we find. We have found, oh, the giant spider, the green spider. We're going to place him right here, and he's going to gain a power up. And he has do -do 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 power up. He's going to get fighter. Okay, he's going to, he's basically just going to, wow, I don't even know how to deal with this. Oh, I know how. How do you deal with it? It's just... On any of his attacks, he gets plus one hit. Oh, die. gotcha. And if okay. If he gets a gremlin, then he gets plus one hit. Thank you, Colin, for explaining that wonderful card. I'm going to throw this guy down right here. And now in, we had a de debate if we we're going to attack this guy or this thing. And the debate didn't last more than about 10, well, probably milliseconds. We're taking this nest out. Our spear lets us roll two red, two blue dice. We automatically do one hit. So it's just a matter of getting at least one hit. And we got plenty to take this nest out. It only had one health left. With the death of our nest, a few things are going to happen. One, the illusion is going to take the damage from that ass venom splash or something. Acidic vapors. That's what it is. So this thing's gone. We also get to give ourselves a soul shard for killing this thing. So we're going to go to four soul shards. And it also is going to place five coins onto the ground right here. I'm going to go ahead, flip my bookmark, and draw an encounter card to see what our enemy does. Our enemy is going to hopefully sit right there and do nothing. Activate all green enemies. Oh, well, that's him. Okay, so this enemy is going to go ahead and activate. Our spider is one space away, so it's going to activate its 1-2 power, attack with web. And if the victim is slowed and there are no other heroes in the area, it's going to move to engage using entrap. Otherwise, it's going to attack with web. Now, I think we missed the attack with web in the last video, so I, we have to make sure we get it right in this one. So let's go ahead and get hit by web. Actually, let's not get hit by web. The web attack is going to give us one auto hit. 
Rolling three blue dice. Now, of course, we have to remember that he this is a fighter, apparently, a fighter spider. He is going to be rolling one extra blue dice. Now, hopefully, we don't get this gremlin symbol. That'd be terrible. I don't want to see gremlins. I don't want to see stars. I don't want to see hits. I want all these to be shields. Let's see. Shield City. Well, we got pretty close to that. Sadly, we are slowed here, and I got hit for two damage. Now, my armor is going to block one of the damage coming in, so I have to defend two hits against because of this vile spider of death and destruction. I blocked one, which means I am going to take one damage, bringing myself down to two, and I am going to be slowed, which means I'm going to go ahead and gain this token here, the slow symbols right here. We're going to put that so it's facing up on our character board. At this point, we're going to move to the next part of this set that he is now going to use in, he's going to move into my square and use in trap. So let's take care of that. And our entrap states, the victim suffers KO, and then, unless saved, suffers 1 HP. So he's going to move in here. I'm going to get KO'd, knocked over. That's going to be awesome. Now I'm going to try to save this. So I've got a 2 in 10 chance here. So a 1 5th percent chance here or something. Nope, fail. I can't even do math. And then you can't even roll the dice. Sigrid, of course, is going to take that 1 point of damage from the entrapped. I mean, super good plan to go after that nest. Why <laughs> 2 damage slowed KO'd? <laughs> so much better to leave the spider on the board. Things may look bleak for our group, but you know, getting rid of that nest was actually pretty good because you didn't have to worry about another Venom coming out and doing absolutely tons more damage. It's going to be Jean's turn, and Jean is going to come in and save Sigrid. She's going to do a move activity over to here. That's two movement. Then she's going to go ahead and use her action activity to focus. I know we thought about using her healing wave, but I think taking out this spider is our best plan right now. Nothing on the board is better than something on the board. Let's see if we can take this spider out. Jean does get two auto hits, one from focusing and one from the mace. Good thing we forged this. Oh, those extra hits are going to save us now. I got nothing. Dude, that is literally the worst roll I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, only I can do this, man. So sadly, we did not hit the spider, so we're going to, I guess, go into the encounter phase. We're going to draw an encounter card and see what happens to our wily spider here. It says, activate up to three enemies, shuffle the encounter deck with the discard pile, and then discard this card. All right, good news, we are discarding this card. Bad news, this thing is activating. Well, the first off, it's taking us two damage. That's what it's doing. Then we're going to go ahead and read our scroll here. It's going to go after the person with the least amount of wounds, which is going to be Sigrid. So if the victim is slowed, we are going to use Entrap. And Entrap down here says the victim suffers Kale. Well, I've already done that. And then unless I save, I suffer one HP. Oh, so there's a chance. Oh, man. Here we go. Come on, there is a chance. Oh, there is no chance. I roll a lot of shields. All right, that's the end of this. I'm going to take one damage from that in trap then. So we're going to go to two damage on her, which is a total of four, which is um, quite a bit. Let's see what else happens now. Now, attack with bite. We're going to attack her with the bite. Let's see how this goes. Two red dice. Oh, I can get poison too. Our giant spider is going to roll two red dice and a blue die because of his he's a fighter spider. Let's see how he does here. He got a total of one, two hits, and again, that slowed, but I'm not... Oh, I, the bite doesn't do slow. I'm looking for lightning bolts. Oh, of course, I got a lightning bolt. I'm poisoned. I'm already poisoned one, so that means I have to take one point of damage, bringing myself up to five damage. I do get to roll two blue dice to try to prevent this two damage from hitting. The problem is, I don't have any armor when you're KO'd, so I just have to roll my two dice and hope that we get some shields. We got two shields! See, I'm a great at rolling the shields! So I block the damage coming in, but I do take the one because I am already poisoned. So Sigrid is now up to five damage, and it's going to move away, and it's always going to move back towards the way it came. We're going to go into the event phase and hopefully get something good. Come on, event cards, show me something good. Oh, it's night time! Read and apply the night event effects described in the storybook. We're going to shift all our powers back one time. Oh, now that's really only going to affect Maya. She's the only one that has any of the powers that are not already available to use. So she's going to shift them both down one. One goes to three and one goes to two. The night effect for this scenario is we don't see anything in any of the books that are explaining what night is going to take place in this quest. So all this card is going to do is kind of stay out and maybe something else in this event deck may be affected by the night card that's there. But as it is now, all it did was we draw it and we pushed our powers back one time. We're going to be able to use our four soul shards at this point, and we're going to use them on genes. We're going to take this down to zero instead of just taking it away and not actually looking like we used them. And we're going to tick her up to two. So she's going to be gaining another power, which is going to be awesome because oh, we need our healer to get as many healing as we can because we're getting absolutely ruined by a lot of these guys. We're going to grab this Dome of Resistance. It's a free action that can be used up to two spaces away. It can put a token down in the target area until the time phase. All heroes in the indicated area can re-roll 
their defense dice. And if they get a gremlin symbol, it also counts as plus one shield. Now at level one, heroes in the same area as the token are affected by this. Whereas when we get to a way higher level, we can start using it within one, which is pretty cool. So she's going to gain that ability as well, a power. And here's that token. We're just going to place it up here to remind ourselves where it is when we want to use it. We're now all going to have to roll for poison, and we need to remember that Maya had a venom on her, a chest hugger. And so she's going to discard that, would technically get poison, but she already is. So that will be her third point of damage. We'll start with Maya. She just needs a shield. No, she doesn't get a shield. Then we'll do Jean. All she needs is a star. Let's see. No, she gets the shield. <laughs> I need a lightning bolt. Let's see how I do. Oh, I got the star. Oh, we all got everybody's powers. Yes, we did. We literally did that two times in a row now. <laughs> Poison is going to activate at this point, so I'm going to take another point of damage. And Maya is going to go to four damage. And Jean is going to go to six because we all have poison. And it's a poison party. We're going to start this turn with the only hero that can actually attack this round. Yes, the only one that can is Jean. Now, Jean first is going to do her action here. She's going to remove a body condition and heal 2 HP. It's going to take two time for this to come back. She's going to heal 2 HP from Sigrid. So Sigrid's down to only having 4 damage, and that poison is toast. Thank goodness, because we can't save to save our life. Then what we're going to do is Jean will move into this space with this spider and she's going to attack. She'd love to focus, but she can't because she already used her action. We're going to roll one red and three blue dice, just needing one success on these. We have one success. Oh my gosh. And we would technically stun uh, that, uh, that spider. Don't need to. We have two hits. That will take out that spider. That spider will gain us five crowns because it'll drop it on the ground and for a free action, we can pick it up. Sigrid's going to have a stellar turn of removing her slow status and standing up. Oh, super cool. Then Maya, all Maya's going to do, because she literally doesn't have any powers that are available to her, and she has no weapon. <laughs> so she's going to move into this space. Oh, you know what she can do? She will go ahead and spend one of her actions to put out her illusion. Her illusion could also move, and she'll go ahead and move her illusion over to this event card, because we're thinking that's the first one we're going to check out. We're also going to, so we don't die, because we're going to take another point of damage, we're going to use our shard here to heal once per round, heal a 1 hero, 1 HP. We're down to only 3 damage. We'll then move to that event phase. We're going to give our event card a draw. And what do we have? We have uh, for each area containing at least one character, yeah, we have uh, two different areas, roll a blue die. If it's a hit, all characters in that area suffer KO and fire of act level. Really? Volcanic activity! <laughs> Sigrid's gonna roll first. She got a gremlin, so nothing happens. Next, we're gonna roll for Jean. Jean got a shield! Thanks to my absolutely horrendous, awesome dice rolling, I've never rolled hits, so that was perfect. We're gonna move our powers up one. The poison is gonna take effect, meaning everybody's gonna take a point of damage, bringing Jean to what? Six, seven. Good thing we powered her up. She also, of course, is gonna try to save. Maya is also going to take a point of damage because of her poison, bringing her to four, and she has to save as well. And for the first time in a long time, Sigrid does not have poison. Let's see if Maya can finally roll a shield. A shield! No, no, no. She rolls a hit. So, yeah, that's a failure. Jean's going to roll next. Let's see how she does. She got a shield! Oh, that's not what she wanted. <laughs> she needed a star, man. We can never save for our lives. Jean's going to activate first. Using her move activity, she's going to move back into the square with all of her friends. She's going to use her Dome of Resistance, being able to place that token down in this space. Then for her action activity, she is going to use this, Lay on Hands. He'll act HP to target hero. She's going to target herself, meaning she goes to 6 HP. Then it says you can also choose to discard the placed Dome of Resistance token to heal the same amount of HP to all other heroes within the range of effect of this token. So our other two characters are each going to heal one health, meaning that Sigrid's going to be at three damage and Maya's also going to be at three damage. It does discard this. That also means we do have to put this to a two, which is better than a four. All right. All Maya then is going to do is activate her shard here. Once per round, target heal hero heals 1 HP. She's going to heal herself, putting her down to only 2 HP of damage. And I think that's it. I don't think we want to reveal an event card yet, so we're just going to stay where we are. Now it's going to be Sigrid's turn. 
Sigrid's only action is she's going to use her Anvil of Thunder. I can roll Soul Rank divided by two red dice, so that'd be one. For each Lightning, place a Charge Token on the Hero card up to three. So let's go ahead and roll this right here and get some Lightning Bolts. Yes, I got one. That's great. So we get one Charge Token. Now, when we want to, we can use these to discard to add attack successes to your next weapon attack. So that'll be pretty good. Our event phase is going to make us discard that card. Jean will take another point of damage because of that poison during the time phase, and so will Maya. And now let's see if we can actually save to get rid of these poisons. Colin and I have discussed this. I think I'm going to roll for Maya. I seem to roll a bunch of shields. Oh, and this time I rolled the star. That means I'm going to roll for Jean looking for a star. And I rolled a shield. <laughs> okay, we were kidding. That was actually a for Maya because I play Maya, so I'm going to heal. No, I'm oh, that's kidding. so good. We're going to start our activations with Sigrid. Since Sigrid actually has some health, she's going to see what is in the event card. So she's going to use her movement activity to move one, two, and then she's going to grab this card and see what it says. Come on, something good. Hidden trap. That doesn't sound good. Draw a trap card. Apply its effect starting from the active hero's area. If the trap card is a no trap, draw another card, shuffle the trap deck with its discard pile. All right, let's draw a trap card. Hopefully this is, well, I don't think too many of these are any good. Teleport. Well, that looks a pretty cool picture. Unless save, each hero within one area is moved to a spawn gate determined using the blue die. Reroll if required. Well, that's not too bad. Hopefully we don't get sent all the way back over there, though. So we'll take our blue die and roll it up. I did not save. So that means I'm going to be going back to a spawn gate. So we have the star spawn gate down here, and then we have the lightning spawn gate way over here. So let's see where I go to. Not the shield one. We don't have the shield one. We've got a star. So I'm actually just going to appear down here. So I ran all the way over there for almost nothing. All right. That's the end, I guess. Of, oh, no. She's got some action activities she could do. She's going to try to use this again. She's going to use her anvil of thunder to roll her soul rank again to see if she can gain some more of these charges. Let's see how many more she gets. None. She got the sword and sorcery symbol. I didn't give me any charges. We're going to first discard our trap card and we're also going to discard this event card. Then we also discuss this. Up here is a treasure token. We want to go check out that treasure token. There's also an event card up there. And if that all else fails, we'll come running back here and check out this other one. I'm going to use my last movement to move over here to grab my five coins. She loves money. Maya is going to go next. She is going to use her shard to heal one point of damage, putting her down only to two. Woohoo! Only two damage. She is then going to move one, two spaces here. She is in a search space, so she can, for an action, reveal this. And, oh yeah, that's what I was worried about. So on the top, if we get a lightning bolt, we get a trap. If we get a star, we get a loot token. And if we get anything else, we get nothing. Now, she does have her power that lets her re-roll any search dice. So we do get two chances here. Let's roll our red die up. We're looking for a star. No, we got nothing. Uh, I'm going to re-roll one more time. Oh boy. Oh boy. Is this a good idea? Let's see. I know that definitely is not a good idea. We're going to draw a trap card instead because that's the type of game that we have. So let's go ahead and draw our trap card. And we have the no effects trap card. Well, we'll take that. Uh, so we found absolutely nothing. Nothing in that search area. Because why would we find anything in this game? Maya has one more action that she can use. She's going to move her illusion sparkles three spaces. One, two, three. Just trying to catch it up with us. I do want to mention I do have one more move as Maya, but I've decided not to move to that event card because we know Maya squishing a lot of times those event cards can be bad. So we're going to let Jean reveal that. The last to activate is going to be Jean. Jean is going to start by using her... Oh, I think she's going to try to heal because, man, our characters are all on the edge here. She's going to use her healing wave, which will remove one body condition and heal two HP. One plus the soul rank divided by two. So she's going to heal up two HP, bring her to four, five damage. But the good news is she finally gets to get rid of this poison. Oh, gosh. We're going to set this to two so that we'll be slowly ticking this down as we continue. She's now going to use her movement activity to move one, two, three, and she's going to go ahead and reveal this event card and see what we have found. Come on, something good. We found, we found story event two. Read and apply the story event effects described in the storybook. Oh, that's perfect. So we're going to be moving in the next part of this. 
and we're going to do that in the next video. Again, we're leaving you on a huge cliffhanger. Can you believe this? Our characters are just really living on the edge. We've got taken a lot of damage. Those poison and those venoms were absolutely brutal. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you're enjoying the playthrough of Sword and Sorcery Ancient Chronicles. We're going to be moving into this story event in the next video. It's going to be awesome. If you did enjoy it, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so we'll see you know when the next video is coming. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. And if you're excited to see if our characters can make it through the rest of this quest, then I need you to meet me at the table. Our tyrant lizard is able to see that. <laughs> you you just, just never know the name. I never know it. I have to the look blue the, thingy. The blue it's going to move two <laughs> space thingies towards me. I just got to get the card right here so I can read it. All right, there we go. These nests at all. So it's going to move one, two, three. How did the other one not get to you? Isn't there a space here? One? It didn't get to me because I cheated. Oh, okay. That's right. This <laughs> I'm going to go here first. Oh, I mean, well. Good yeah, enough. It doesn't matter because it's going to. Okay, okay. I'm going to take another point of... <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm ready, I'm ready. Our giant spider bed of roll was Bella's... <laughs>